What's up, YouTube? This is Mike with House Reptiles. So this is vlog 18 again, like I mentioned in the last few videos. This time of the year, it might be a vlog every two weeks. It might be a vlog every week. Um, it really depends on if I can come up with enough content and to have time to actually film stuff. But uh, what the snake I'm holding here is my crystal female. If you've been following me on um, Instagram and Facebook, uh, the links are in the comments below. You'll see that I posted the two babies that came out of her clutch. It was my uh, clutch 18, my last final clutch of 2018. And I got some interesting results. And after sharing those pictures and talking to a lot of people, uh, I have some thoughts and I'd love to hear what everyone else has, thinks about them. So definitely comment in the uh, comment down below. But again, she's a crystal. If you don't know what a crystal is, that's a Mojave and a special. Uh, it's a Lelic, acts like super. Um, all she can produce is Mojaves and specials. Okay? Dad is a banana clown who's in with a female. I'm going to show that later in the vlog. Some of the breeding that's starting to go on this time of the year here. But he is in with a female, so I'm not going to pull him out. But Dad was sold to me as just a regular banana clown. This is one of the babies. And if you look at this snake... You know, I assumed because of the pairing that there was banana in this. Alright, now I'm not so sure. But a lot of people say super special or super special banana. Um, the reason why I'm wondering is one person said, what if it was a partho clutch? And at first I was like, well, they are, have banana in them, so it couldn't be partho. This here, by the way, is the other one. Well, if they have banana in them and they can't be a partho clutch, then they both have to be 100% head clown, and that's awesome. But the dad was sold to me as a regular male maker clown, and these both popped female. So if they're both females, which is in a a parthenog parthenogenesis clutch all right if they both pop female that would make sense because in a partho clutch the mom if i understand correctly can only produce female babies well then that would also i think have to make both of these be super specials and then again that's where it gets tricky because to me i think this one here that's a little bit lighter in color i think that that might be it looks a lot like a crystal Banana. It looks like a crystal banana, to be honest. And that looks like a super special, or maybe it's a super special uh, banana. Now, in a partho clutch, I don't think I could hit on a crystal, though. I think I could only hit on super specials or super Mojaves. So, that's what's just so weird about the whole thing. Um, on Instagram, I think his name is Daniel Rivera. Sorry if I was wrong on that. He produced a, an animal that's very similar to this from a very similar pairing. And he thinks that his is a super special possible banana. And it looks a lot like this one. But yeah, I mean, it's obviously I'm holding on to both of them for now. Like I said, they're both females. Um, I'm hoping that the banana that dad is the dad because then they are 100% heck clowns as well. But I guess time will tell. And again, just very cool babies. Definitely comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. You think it's a partho clutch? Do you think these guys have banana in them? Go on Morph Market, by the way, if you're not sure what super specials look like. There's one that looks a lot like this girl on there. But, like I said, I'm bewildered, but I'm very happy with it. Very cool. Now, they are little, so hopefully they start eating this week and do well. It is uh, actually the end of December. It's actually almost Christmas. So breeding season is underway here. Um, you know, my room is staying pretty warm this year, and I'm hoping that's not an issue with breeding. Uh, but I did put a few animals in together yesterday, and I had a bunch of locks this morning. So I figured, hey, I'll show you guys some of what I have going on, some of the locks that are going on, maybe give you a little bit of my what I do with that. Uh, one thing I try to do is I always try to clean the female's tank beforehand. So I try to give her a clean tank, then I put the male in, and I often will add a little bit of extra water in the tub to kind of increase humidity for them. Uh, I used to have a spray thing, but it's not, not working right now, so I just throw a little extra water in the tub, and then, you know, I keep them together, check the next morning. So I'm going to show you bows first. So let's come over here. Now, one of the things with breeding is they do make a mess, so I apologize ahead of time that most of them have, you know, urates, maybe some poop. Uh, sometimes they spill the water, things like that. Uh, so this morning, these two, uh, they're not, I don't think they're locked anymore. But 
The big one is a cow, a stripe call albino. It's funny. I had someone recently tell me how to pronounce cow or call, and I'm like, thank you, but really, guys, you know, if I wanted pronunciation lessons, I'd take an English class. But anyhow, thank you. So it is call, uh, K A H L, so call albino. Uh, the big female here, and she's just a call, call albino with a stripe. The male is an albino leopard. They were locked up pretty good this morning. It does not look like they are now, but coming back in. That's one of my boa breedings. This here is another one of the boa breedings. This is, uh, I'm very excited for this one. Uh, they do not look locked up anymore either. They were this morning. So I have a blood female with a, um, oh my gosh, what is he? Hypo Hog Island Het Blood male. And that's the male, whoop, and that's the female. I'm really excited about this clutch. I want to hit on the Hypo Hog Island Blood. Um, my other boa pairings, they weren't doing anything. My Colombians weren't doing anything. Uh, and earlier today when I checked, they still weren't, so I'm not even going to show them off. Next, I'm going to show you, and this stick is often, on these lower ones, just easier to open up. But uh, here, I have children's pythons that uh, they don't look locked anymore. The lighter colored ones, my male, the darker one is the female. They have locked a few times already this year. They were locked pretty good this morning. Looks like the male is still trying to get back in. Then I have my spotted pythons. Again, they were also, oh, see, that's what I'm talking about. If you look down, there's a lot of poop there. They do that when they're breeding. They're not locked anymore. This morning they were locked. That female will eat everything in sight. So uh, I will actually probably separate them later since the male's not even trying right now. All righty. Um, now I'll show you some ball pythons that were locked this morning. All right, these are, oops, still locked. There you go. So that's a pastel lesser. Pos Het Clown that I really do think is going to prove out. Breeding a Pinstripe Clown. She's a first year female. That male actually sired a pretty cool clutch with a Het Red Exanthic Super Stripe last year. So you can see I have some of them I have on the Coco I've been trying. And some of them I have on the newsprint. Up here uh, we have a GHI Chocolate Het Albino. With the super chocolate, I think they're still locked up in the back there. Again, I don't want to bother them too much. I'm really hoping to hit on some GHI super chocolates this year. And just so you understand my system, these blue tags that are turned sideways, that means the male was locked up with the girl in there. These green tags just mean snakes that didn't eat last week. Purple means snakes that are in shed. So I have a, a little system that I do use that's not just random. All right, over here, I'll show you guys a few. Um, let's see, they still locked up. Yeah, they are. So this is cool. I'm really excited about this. Black pastel yellow belly with a pastel gravel specter male. So I could hit on pastel, black pastel highways from this clutch, which would be awesome. Really excited about that. I tried to look uh, black pastel highways up on um, Morph Market. I couldn't find anything. Are they still locked? Oh, yep, still locked here. So this is my possible Odia male. He's like Pinstripe, Pastel, Mojave, Enchi, Yellow Belly, possible Odium. I have him locked up right now with the Spectre female. So I'm just trying to hit some like really cool Super Stripe combos. Again, this is the newsprint, but you can see they, they make it a little dirty. Uh, here, trying to hit on some, uh, watch the heater bin. Um, here we have the GHI. Uh, they still locked. No, they don't look locked anymore. This is a big Mojave Het Ghost female to a GHI Chocolate Het Ghost male. Trying to hit on the uh, GHI Mojave uh, Ghost. Up here, and I will, can you see? That is my Leopard Candino locked up with my um, GHI Chocolate Albino male. Um... I think that's everybody in that rack, and then over here, this is my pairing that produced the Lightning Pied, who's still giving me hell for feeding. Uh, I'm still actually having to assist feed that animal, but hopefully she starts on her own. So those are just two 100% double hats. Uh, I'll show this guy off, even though they weren't locked earlier. He's working on it, but still not. That's the the banana male. Which I guess in theory, if he is the dad of that clutch, he might actually be a banana special clown. 
But again, he was just sold to me as a banana clown. And that is a big heck clown female that he's in there with. Um, I do have a couple other pairings like this, which I can't get this male. I've tried every trick in the book, but I cannot get this male to do anything. This is a black pastel, pastel clown male. I cannot get him. He's almost a thousand grams. He will not lock with anyone. If you look at this VPI Exanthic Spider Girl, I mean, she is uh, the the uh, the glow before the go. I mean, she is just shining right now. She's at 25 millimeters. I mean, I got another male shed in there. I popped another male, put a little sperm plug on her back. I mean, I'm trying everything to get him to do something, and he just will not do anything. She has been bred by my pinstripe clown already this season, but I really wanted this male to breed her, and uh, I'm just hoping not to miss her ovulation, so we'll see. Uh, what other pairings do I have? Here's another one. Uh, this young male, can we get in there? Uh, he's not in luck, no. Um, this is the Pastel Lesser Clown Male, another one of my males that's not doing any work. Um, he's with a Pastel Cinnamon Heck Clown female. She's at like 30 millimeters already, so she's probably already good to go. But um, I was trying to get one last breeding, that male to start breeding. He's like 700 grams. Down here, uh, still nothing yet. Oh, the female shed. <laughs> I saw she was in shed, but that's my Lesser Clown Male with a GHI Heck Clown female. Again, all she's been real stubborn to all the males. I mean, this is a proven breeder male who, <laughs> excuse me, who usually locks up right away. And even he's having trouble getting her to do anything this year. All right, so that's just what I had going on breeding. I got tons of other breeding stuff going on. I have a bunch of males that aren't in use right now. Um, I got lots of females that are really close to size. I thought I'd just give you a quick little breeding update, show you kind of how it looks when I'm doing it. Um, how I end it, when I take the male out, I actually clean the male's cage, give him fresh water, everything, put him back, then I clean the female out, give her fresh water, clean everything. So I try to clean female beforehand, and then I clean male and female afterwards. So that's kind of how I do it. Um, I usually just, you know, I put them in, what I said yesterday, and I probably will leave them in there until either tomorrow night or Saturday morning, and I pull them out, I'll feed them over the weekend, and then I like to give them a couple days to digest, and then I'll start looking to see who's next. This year, because I do have the ultrasound, my breeding's been a lot different. I'm trying not to tire out my males, use them uselessly. So I'm trying to, you know, follow the girls that are have follicles and have grown follicles, and only put the males to those girls. Um, I have used the throw a male in to get a girl eating trick. Still, you know, I had one female that wasn't eating, so I threw a male in, and she started eating as soon as they had locked up. Um, but you know, for the most part, I'm trying to use the males a little bit less, not just that blind. Like in previous years, I just tried to make sure the male bred the female at least once every month until I got an ovulation. But sometimes I never got ovulations. So your males are just doing all this breeding for nothing. One of the nice things of the ultrasound is I can actually follow along, see where the females are at. And for that matter, actually, let's end here. This is going to be, again, watch the heater behind you. This is going to be the first clutch of 2019. Again, until I have eggs, I'm not going to tell you too much about her, but this is a 100% double het female, bred to a 100% double het male, which I know my odds are very slim, one, 1 out of 16 um, odds to get the double recessive, but she's a big female. She's like 26, 2700 grams, um, and I'm pretty sure if I hit on the animal, it will be a world's first. This is her prelay shed she's in. She's shed any day now, and 30 days from there, I'll get my first clutch of 2019. And, um, you know, I think I will end there. Um, do a quick look over here at the turtles. Uh, I did switch up my spotted turtles um, to a more aquatic environment. So, the little fellas down here. But I was keeping them for the winter all together, but it was more for um, the North American woods and the box turtles. But, uh... It wasn't, they weren't doing well, the spotteds. So I moved them into this more aquatic little habitat. And they seem to be, whoop, seem to be doing good. And, uh, yeah, I'll end it there. All right, Osmond Reptiles out.